Welcome to the Pool Chasers Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Viafania, and today's guest is ASP President Jimmy Meese. Pleasure to have you on the show, Jimmy. How you doing? I'm doing great, Greg. It's a pleasure to, to, to be on the show. I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. And I'm really excited about this episode. I've been watching tons of videos about ASP and your podcast you did with another podcast I can't remember, but it was extremely informative. I learned a lot that I didn't know before and just pumped to talk about this. Absolutely. I am too. And, and I love podcasts. I think that's where I get most of my information and news. And, and I love the fact the, that, that you're doing this and specifically focusing on the pool industry. So why don't you give the listeners a 30,000 foot view of how you got your start in the pool business and where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so my journey started about 20 years ago in the pool industry. I was working for uh, the city of Clemson, South Carolina. I was the program director, but I, I, I was responsible for a youth and, and adult activities in the city, special events. I was in charge of the Christmas parade. So it was, it was a little bit of everything and I loved it. I loved being around the people and I, I enjoyed the work. Uh, but I also had a young family at the time and there was an entrepreneurial spirit that I had that, that was always just gnawing at me, but I didn't know what I wanted to go do. I didn't know what business that was going to be. I had no idea it would be the pool business. And, and so in 2004, my brother-in-law at the time well, still is my brother-in-law, but he had started a swimming pool business right out of college in 2001 in Macon, Georgia. And, and we would visit, my wife and I would visit him and his wife and occasionally, and I would ride around with him as he was doing pool renovations. And so we'd go spend a long weekend in Macon and I would spend my Saturday with him learning about replastering and retiling and deck texturing and just the pool business in general, how to make money doing it. And I found myself attracted to it. I really loved it. I love what he was doing, the fact that he was making money doing it, and the fact that he was working for himself and the freedoms that, that came with that. And yeah, I just started having conversations with him and uh, without going down a, a really a rabbit trail, but what would be a long story, the short story of it was ultimately he decided to start uh, franchising. At that time, it was All Seasons Pool Company in Macon, Georgia. And of course, eventually we trademarked it to ASP America Swimming Pool Company because someone already had All Seasons Pool Company trademarked. And I was the first franchisee and I started that business while I still worked for the city. I would get up early and go clean pools. I would clean pools at night. I would have spotlights with me. Obviously, I would make use of the weekends doing pool work as well. I started doing that and, and, and it was going great. I was growing the business. And so I put my two week notice in with the city. And in 2000, January 1, 2005, I went into it full time. That was right around the time uh, he, he had everything put together from an FD standpoint, operations manual, and had the franchise set up. And so, yeah, at that point, I became the first franchisee, ASP Clemson, South Carolina. And, and then I, so I operated my franchise for five years. And then in 2010, as ASP was growing, I think we were around 35 franchises at that point in time. He asked me if I would be interested in coming on board in an operations role and growing with the company and with the, with the possibility of, of being in this seat as president one day. And I believed in his vision and, and, and I, I did that. I came on board at, at corporate, kept my franchise for a period of time, ultimately sold it when it became time for us to move from South Carolina to Macon. And that's when we started really expanding our campus, started investing more in friend of marketing to, to grow on the map. And, and that was in 2000, end of 2010, into 2011. And yeah, was VP of operations, senior VP uh, up to just a couple of years ago. And then, and then took over the brand fully January of last year. That's an awesome story. And going back to the name, I heard Stuart on one of the videos you have on your YouTube channel, talking about how him and his girlfriend and now wife, we're trying to find something that started with an A because of the phone book. And I just thought that was hilarious how things change. It is hilarious because that was the way you advertised back in the day. Smart. 
Yeah, it's very smart. And marketing has changed so much. I know we'll probably talk a little bit about marketing in our industry later on, but yeah, it, it really is. It was that simple. Pick a name that starts with the letter A. It's all about getting to the customer first, right? Yeah. And we'll get out of the past here in a second, but listening to him and he's an entrepreneur from the very beginning. This is the the founder of ASP. I heard him talking about selling candy when he was 13 and having an automotive cleaning business and different things like that. You think that you guys connected really well because of that entrepreneur spirit that you both had? I, I think so. For me, it, it was, I, I was attracted to the idea of working for myself. And I was fortunate enough to have a brother-in-law that, that, that really was incredibly talented in, in regards to, to starting a business and, and being successful at it. And that's, that, that's not an easy thing to do. I, I saw a statistic recently on entrepreneur.com and 10%, I'm sorry, 20% of small businesses fail in the first 12 months. And 50% of small businesses fail in their first five years. And that's wow. a terrifying statistic. And we use that statistic to show the value of, of franchising because our closure rates a lot less than that. And I think, yeah, to answer your question, ultimately though, absolutely. I was attracted to that and he showed a, a path of being able to do that. And it was one of those things too, where I wanted to do something on my own. But having him as support at that time gave me confidence to move forward. Sure. So why don't you share with the listeners what ASP is exactly and some of the offerings you have as a franchise? Because I know there's different franchises out there, different models. People think of things like uh, Subway and different franchises like that. So maybe just give us a bird's eye view of what you guys got going on over there. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, our bread and butter is pool cleaning. And there's three ways, technically four ways now that we make money in our model. Obviously, number one is pool cleaning. Number two is repair work, or equipment replacement, repair, pumps, filters, heaters, those kinds of things. Pool renovation is the third way we make money. And now the fourth way that we've just recently launched our, our pool construction initiative of January this year is building pools. And, and, and so we're off and running there, but yeah, so that's our model. And our, our goal is to create some structure and professionalism in what has historically been a fragmented market. It's, it's one of those things for us where we're looking to partner with business minded individuals. In fact, it's okay if the individual doesn't really know anything about swimming pools, other maybe than growing up swimming in one as a child or whatever. And, and cause we can teach you the pool business, but what's hard to teach are things like work ethic and, and, and then focusing on the profitability side of it too, if it's not a strength and so, yeah, that, that's in a nutshell, that's who we are and, and what we do. And so people can flip their business into a franchise or they buy a franchise that's already established or both. Yeah. Most of our locations come in with no pool experience, right? They come in, there's a, there's an opening. And just like you mentioned with Subway or McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, if there's a uh, territory available, we will sell an ASP there, depending on some variables, how many pools are there, we're able to pull that data, how many residential and commercial pools are in an area. And so it needs to be a viable territory for us to launch one there. But that's the most common franchisee that comes into the system and we train them. We do have a conversion program where, you know, if you're an independent in the pool industry and, and for whatever different reasons, you, you may feel like that it's time for you to, to maybe partner with a franchise. We're an option for you. And, and based off of that, there's some different things that we would offer the conversion that would be different. The initial fee to join the franchise would be a lot less you know, discounted because someone in the business is already bringing in a book of business from a revenue perspective. And so we value that, but we also have a track record of bringing in conversions and helping them grow their business, both top and bottom, that we can help someone that's wanting to convert their business and take it 
have a, someone to partner with to take it to the next level. Sure. Thank you. And what would you say the primary benefits are of converting an independent business to a franchise model? Yeah, uh, there's so many. I'll try to hit the, what I would consider the most important ones. I think for a lot of the reasons I mentioned earlier in, in going into business and, and having confidence of going into business, having someone that's already done it. Um, I, I think one of the values is, is having being able to have a business coach that knows the business very well and can give you a, a 10,000 foot perspective of your business. And, and, and maybe you don't need the technical support, right? Because you know how to clean a pool, water chemistry in the day-to-day operations, but maybe there's some things that you just don't see because you're, you're stuck in the business all day long. Coming on board with us, the business coach is gonna help you go from working in the business to working on the business. And that's really what we want for all of our franchise owners. We, we ultimately want you to be uh, the CEO of your business and, and focusing on keeping the top line full and growing your revenue, both top and bottom. And so the business coach is, is one big aspect of it. Also our marketing team, you would have full access to. So from a marketing perspective, we have a, a great website that we would maintain for you. We also update often. And so we're managing that for you. You would obviously get to engage in that website in, in, in different ways. We also have vendor relationships that maybe you don't have, or maybe you do have, but the relationship would be different just because the size of our company and, and some of the things that we're able to, to let. So it would create some opportunity there, not only from a, a vendor standpoint, but also just from a buying power standpoint. So those are just some of the things that would come into play that would help you maximize your bottom line. So some areas where you would think, okay, why would I pay someone a royalty um, to do what I'm currently doing? So that's what we're doing, right? We're showing you the value of that to where the royalty is, is absolutely worth it because of the, the additional profit that you're making. And then again, other things that would be inclusive, the peer network that we have. We've grown to a point now where 140 locations strong in 26 states, unless you're in South Dakota, you're probably going to be in an area close by to an existing ASB or a group of ASBs. And so you'd have a peer network that that's unique in our industry. It's hard to call a competitor and say, hey, what's working uh, for you? And so you may have some of that, but, but a lot of times that's difficult to have. You've got that if you're part of a franchising system. Um, we have regional meetings, annual convention, monthly webinar, town halls, you're put into a peer group to help you grow and, and to be successful. And just from a, a platform standpoint, we've got platforms that we utilize too that are parts of what we would call our secret sauce, but things to make your life more streamlined and efficient. And all those things lead to profitability as well. So yeah, there's lots of other things that we could do for someone that's coming in that's in the pool business. And we feel like that we would we offer a value there that would offset um, any fees that they they typically aren't used to to paying, which would be the royalty. It's beautiful, and I can't remember what you said exactly, but I thought this was so important. This being started towards nine eleven, and you being in the business during the Great uh, Recession two thousand seven two thousand nine. That was a great recession. And just getting through that and having the business know how to get through that, I think is huge for all the different franchisees to have that leadership to help guide them in what to do. Because the future as of right now is a little bit uncertain and that would be nice to have in your back pocket. Yeah, 2000, 2008, 2009, 2010, were, they were no joke. And people that maybe weren't in business during that time younger more than likely, they don't really understand that. It's way more difficult than it is right now. That that was a scary time. I think what we found though as a company and, and frankly as an industry was that in some ways we are recession proof minus the renovation and pool construction side of things, right? Typically pool construction is gonna follow the new home construction. And so when that tanked in 2008, 2009, 10, even to 11, the new pool construction went down just like uh, new home construction went down. But what didn't happen were people letting their pools go green and not replacing pumps. And typically people that have swimming pools ha have discretionary income that they can, they can pull from in what was a very difficult economic time. 
and still continue to pay for monthly pool cleaning, for equipment repair when needed, um, and, and even in some cases, renovations. Even those opportunities did decrease during that time. And you're right. I've had so many conversations recently with not only our franchisees, but vendors, people in the pool industry talking that lived through that time and just talking through some of the similarities that we're going through now. And again, I think that's the beauty of the business that we're in. And in some ways, the pool cleaning and repair side is recession proof. And whatever may come our way in an election year, as we go into 2025, I think we're definitely hopeful and, and doing all we can do to be prepared for it. Sure. Do you have any advice, at least one piece of advice you'd give to business owners at this point in time on running their business? Yeah, advice. So many things. I, for me, communication is so important because it can touch on different parts of your business. The most important part of your business is your customer. And so I think communication with your customer is, is, is so important. What's the customer experience like when they come to you? And that starts really with the, it can start with the marketing side of it. Maybe let's start there for a second. The marketing side is incredibly important. What's your website look like? How did they hear about you? What reviews are they reading about you? Do you have reviews? Do you have good reviews? You Typically you're riding around in some decaled vehicle, truck. What does your truck look like? Does it have a decal on it or does it just have a blue pole hanging out of the back of it? Those things are mobile billboards. If you don't have a wrap on your truck, you're costing yourself some money and some reputation. People like to see that. It, it, it gives them some confidence in their, in their pool company when they see that wrapped vehicle in the driveway. And is it clean? No one's the last time you cleaned that truck. That's one of the things that we really push our franchisees on. Let's, let's dress and act the part. And so communication, obviously, from a marketing perspective. But as the marketing is working for you, how are you answering the phone? How are you communicating with the customer? Are you answering the phone? Are you able to? Are a lot of your calls going to voicemail? I know as a consumer, personally, I hate it when I call a service company and it goes directly to voicemail. Sometimes I leave a message. Sometimes I don't. Typically, I don't. I'll call the next pool company. Uh, next service company. And I think that that's important to think about. And so what's a fix there? Again, let's improve communications. We thought about getting a call center in place. All of our franchisees are on a call center. We want the customer to have the experience of where they're getting someone live. Even if the, the owner of the business is unable to, because they're meeting with another customer, possibly. Um, we want a live voice to answer and we want to be able to set an appointment. And so those are the important things, I think, from a communication standpoint with the consumer. Online booking, do you have online booking? I think more and more um, we're seeing a, a kind of a culture shift of people not really wanting to talk on the telephone anymore. But we're texting a lot or posting. Do you have uh, online booking capabilities on your website? I think that's the future right? Being able to have a place where a customer can go and they can pick a day and a time for someone to come out and look at their pool. A long-winded answer, I could continue going down the communication road, um, but communication is, is so very important. There's so many facets of it. And at the end of the day, those that communicate well, not only with their customers, but with their, their staff, their vendors, those are the people that are going to be the most successful in whatever business they're in. Beautiful. And does ASB have a call center or does each location have their own CSR? Yes. So we do have a call center and currently our call center is uh, an overflow. One of the things that we are exploring currently and we'll pilot soon, which is brand, it's going to be brand new for us. So there'll be some growing pains, but we're going to pilot a call center answering the call initially, not being an overflow. And, and also being able to schedule an appointment for the franchisee, because what we've noticed and really to my point about communication, what we have noticed is the franchisees are busy. The business owner is busy wearing a lot of hats. We all know what it's like when the phone rings, typically we're right in the middle of doing something. And so wouldn't it be nice instead of having to stop what we're doing to answer the phone, which is incredibly important. It's a, it's a customer calling. 
And so we want to answer that call. But then after we answer the call, we have to, however long does it take us to, there's studies on this, how long does it take us to, to get re-engaged into the, the project or task that we were working on before the call came in. And so we, we want to take that away from being a deterrent and, and make it something positive. Again, not only from a customer experience standpoint, but also for the franchisee, the business owner's standpoint. That's a great idea. What are some misconceptions about franchisings that you've encountered? One of my favorite shows on TV is a show called Big Brother. And it's a reality show. It's very hokey. And, but it's, anyway, my wife and I have watched it from the beginning. It's been on for 20 something years. I would say the misconception is a franchisor, it comes across as a big brother, right? We're watching everything through a microscope. We're micromanaging the franchisee. We're handling issues instead of with a carrot, with a big stick. And so it's, it, it comes across in that way. I think, um, again, from a misconception standpoint, that, that is, that couldn't be further from the truth. Ultimately we're successful if our franchisees are successful. And I mentioned before, we want to partner with business minded individuals that want to grow their business and be successful. And they see value in our model. And so they buy a franchise and come on board. And so there's an expectation for them to follow the model. Those locations that follow our model are successful. And from time to time when they don't, then there, there are issues that we have to work through. And that's just a part of life in general. But at the end of the day, we're just wanting to help the franchisee be as successful as they can be. And, and we want them to make business decisions. All of our locations are independently owned and operated. And um, I believe in the empowering of the franchisee to, to be accountable for their business and utilize us when you need us. We're here to help. The, the only time where there, there's a true issue from a franchise or seat is if there's something that's being done that's detrimental to the brand. And so I don't look at it as a big brother hat. I look at it as looking out for the well-being of all of our franchisees. Um, and, and so again, that misconception of we are ruling with an iron fist couldn't be further from the truth. And we're held accountable by our franchisees. We have an FAC, a Franchise Advisory Council. They're very involved in our decision-making and they're crystal clear in communicating to us whenever there's issues, concerns, feedback, thoughts, just ideas, good ideas, typically that can make our model better. And so we're always open to that as well. So how do you measure success for one location? What things are you looking for? Maybe it's not always like financial, especially in the beginning, like what things are you looking for that stand out? Yeah. So a new location coming in is, is a good way to start, right? Cause we want to get everyone off to a successful start. And so we, we have a plan in place for that and, and not to get real granular in, into that. This may not be the place for it. It's all about preparation, understanding the business that you're coming into. That's incredibly important to be successful. We have an online training site that the franchisee has access to uh, once they sign on with us. And, and so they navigate that before they come to their initial training here in Macon. We call it pool school. And when they come to pool school, they're here for two weeks. And so we want them to be prepared so that they're getting the most out of pool school because technically, and, and you're familiar with the pool industry, you've been in it for a long time. There's some parts of it are simple, but some parts are complicated, especially from some of the new technology that's come out. And we need the franchisee here for six weeks, but we're not going to do a six week training. They don't want to stay in making that long. So we want to, we want to get them here two weeks, get them out. So a lot of the training is obviously is their preparatory work coming into the, the pool school training. Pool school training is a lot of hands-on training after that. And so we're going to train them on how to clean the pool, water chemistry, wiring 101, how to wire up a pump, salt cell, timers, plumbing, what are the importance of hydraulics just in general. They're cutting pipe, they're gluing it, they're doing troubleshooting on damage. The fundamentals. The, all the fundamentals, exactly. But from a success standpoint, ultimately, we want them to be the CEO. So eventually they're going to hire a staff. They're going to hire someone to come and do repairs. And they're going to hire someone to come and clean the pools. That's how they can scale and grow. 
what does success look like? They need to understand what they're selling. And so we spend a lot of time on sales training, understanding how to sell the value of weekly pool cleaning, the value of replacing your pump with a variable speed pump, upgrading to automation, the importance of water chemistry in general as it relates to renovations or needing a renovation ultimately, if you're not taking care of your pool properly. Basically, knowledge. So what does success look like? I think instilling uh, as much knowledge as we can into them as they launch, but the continuing education side of it is incredibly important. Like why do some businesses struggle to, to grow? Well, typically it's a sales issue, right? And, and, and so what is, well, what do you mean by that? If you don't understand the products that you're selling, you're more than likely not going to be a good salesman at it. It'd be like if you sold cars, and you have, if you're selling Teslas and you have no idea how the Tesla works or any of the benefits of it, or you're not going to be very good at it. And the same thing applies in our industry. And so we push that, the continuing education side of it. And we help with that by scheduling regional trainings, um, monthly webinars. The vendors are always open to doing some type of training so they can get some business. Back to the listeners, yeah, you're in the pool industry. Just continue to learn. That's really going to open up doors for you to continue to scale your business and grow. Love it. Yeah, there's no better teacher than the field, right? Making mistakes and making note of the mistake and what you did to remedy that mistake. There's somebody listening to this that owns a pool service company and they've been thinking about something like this. What's your advice like on when they would know when to step into a franchise or at least look into it? I would say if you've gotten to a point where you've plateaued your revenue, to me, I think that's the, the trigger as a business owner to, to and again, this is making, I'm making an assumption that you, you want to grow beyond whatever that plateau number is. And so assuming you're wanting to grow, I think that is a warning sign of I, I've hit my ceiling I probably need to partner with somebody. And what does that look like? Before I talk about franchising, that could be bringing in a, a business partner. That could be looking from a acquisition standpoint, maybe, maybe adding, buying out a competitor or buying a route if you're in a, a market that, that has that as a commodity. And, or there's also just business coaches that are out there. And so all those are things though, that you can absolutely do to partner and to take your business to the next level. Or you could look at the franchising route, specifically ASP. We, again, we have a conversion program and, and we have a track record of helping locations do that. I, I think of our Dallas location, we, they came on board in 2012, it was a while ago. And the owner at that time, they've sold a few years ago, so there's a new owner there. But the original owner that converted to ASP, he operated his pool business in the Dallas, Plano, Texas area for 20 plus years. And he hit a 650,000 gross revenue wall ceiling. And so he wanted to partner with someone, right? And so these are all things that he bounced around and ultimately went online and he came across ASP franchising, reached out and the rest is history. Within a few years of converting, we were able to help him grow his revenue to three plus million dollars. At one time he was our top revenue producing franchise. They're still in our top 10, but it's a great success story for someone who had, had plateaued revenue wise, but was looking for someone to partner with to help from a coaching perspective, a marketing perspective, so he could scale his business, day-to-day -day operational processes that he did not have in place. A lot of, just a lot of things that, that he knew the pool business, knew everything about it, but he reached that point to where he just needed help to grow. And I think that's when you would come to us for that. Yeah. It's sports joining a team that has a proven track record to win championships. If you have an opportunity to join that team and ride that wave opposed to going to the park and finding whoever wants to play and there's, you don't have any systems set up. You don't have anything. It's going to take a lot longer to get on that level. I think a lot of people have to look at if this was a game, what's the name of the game? 
Or are you trying to be profitable, do it responsibly, marketing, all these different things? Like, how can you get there faster? Because, you know, time is of the essence. Time is money. How much time are you willing to sacrifice in doing it all by yourself? I think processes and all that stuff is so valuable that if there's somebody that has done it and it works and they've made it through recessions and all that, something to look into. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Our, our model is proven. We've grown year over year, not only from a revenue standpoint, but also from a, a location standpoint. And we're proud of that. And we have great retention on our corporate staff. We've all been here for many years. Our most recent hire has been here now for two years. Um, we, we've lost uh, only one employee on our staff over the 14 years that I've been a, a part of ASP franchising. And that's oh, wow. an incredible statistic and, and one that we're really proud of just because of the culture that we have here. But anybody that's interested in coming on board, a part of that would be going through a validation process where you could call any of our franchise owners and, and have a conversation with them. And that holds us accountable, right? Because they're going to tell you. And so, but I know we do things with integrity and we have a great culture in place. And we have a proven record and validation isn't something that, that worries me like maybe some franchisors. I'm fine with you calling any of our franchise owners because I know what they're going to tell you. Yeah. So let's jump into marketing. You've talked about that a little bit, but you and the ASP team have nailed the marketing. And maybe we could just talk about the benefits of being tied to that ASP brand because that's it's hard to put a price on that. It takes a long time to get that brand recognition. Thinking about somebody being here in Arizona that's used ASP and they loved it and they went to say Florida or Texas or South Carolina, not South Dakota, but they could essentially get hooked back up with another ASP. So maybe just talk about the benefits of being a part of that. Yeah. And that happens all the time. It's so cool when I hear that from our franchisees where a customer relocates or they buy a second home somewhere and we have an ASP there. It's such a, it's such a cool story and shows the power of the ASP brand. Yeah. From a marketing perspective, <clears throat> you're absolutely right. Our website's been up and continues to build SEO strength, um, search engine optimization. And we're constantly working on that so that even when our new locations launch and their website goes live right after pool school, they have that, that recognition online, America's Swimming Pool Company, and all those keywords that, that would fall into that. We have a great digital ad vendor, too, that we utilize and that our franchisees would have access to. So they'd have their portal. They could go in and adjust their digital ad budget. LSAs are a big deal now, local service ads. I know you're sure you're familiar with that. We're seeing different things there that's really just incredible. The cost per lead. And the pool service side of things is really inexpensive at the end of the day. I think it's 27 bucks per lead for our locations. And we'll take that right now, but they're good leads. And it's the way Google's kind of set up this vetting system. Um, as long as you're picking up the phone. As long as you're picking up the phone. Exactly. Why invest all this money into marketing if you're not going to answer the phone as you should. But, uh, but yeah, so again, I think the digital side is really where things are. We continue to do direct mail. Sometimes direct mail has a stigma. Yeah, I get a ton of that in the mail and I throw it in the trash can. Yeah, absolutely. I do too. I get the same flyers from different service companies and I toss them. Um, a couple of reasons we continue to do direct mail. One, it actually works. <laughs> so we have noticed that um, when, when it goes out with our call tracking numbers on the direct mail piece, we can see <coughs> the calls coming in to the system for the franchisees that send out direct mail when they go out. So they work. We also see a correlation on their website. Um, basically, this is what's happening, right? Sure, you're throwing the direct mail piece in the trash can, but they see that ASP brand and they see the cool photo and they see some specials, right? And typically what happens is the week direct mail goes out, those locations, online web traffic increases. And so that, that's, that's the correlation of the value of what direct mail can do and it works together with the website, right? Because now they're coming to the website and they may call you from the website or send in a web submission from the website, right? Or book an appointment, whatever. And so th those elements are incredibly important from a marketing perspective. We also get the actual addresses 
of, of residential and commercial swimming pools. And, and so instead of casting a wide net of sending out direct mail to someone's entire zip code, knowing that many aren't going to have swimming pools, we are maximizing the marketing spend there by sending direct mail just to locations that have swimming pools. And we continue to update those in real time because they still build swimming pools. We get that data, we house that data, franchisees utilize that data, not only from a direct mail perspective, but other forms of grassroots marketing that they may want to participate in. And, and that's maybe where I'll end. The grassroots marketing side is so important. We, we provide a lot of resources for that, both from a material, paper material marketing standpoint, but also things that they can use from a digital marketing. Um, we do email marketing. So we do that for our franchisees <laughs> where we do follow-ups. Existing customers in their system, maybe they haven't uh, done work for in a while. So like an old lead. And so we'll send a, a monthly email to them just to try to re-engage them. And it's incredibly impactful in bringing back old leads. So, Yeah, I think that's incredible. I think that alone is worth it. And if you get this call center that you were talking about dialed in, that's just going to be a real pass shoot score situation for any business where they're just going to really be doing what they do best, which is their knowledge in pools or whatever they got started in the first place. But I love what you said, and you said it worked, but there's so many people with different walks of life. There's some people that even at this uh, day and age, they don't really use the internet so much. They might go through the Val pack or whatever's in the mail, or they're going through stuff on Facebook. You never know. You're just throwing it in all the different locations, but paying attention all the time to what's working and what's not. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Facebook's a, another incredibly important way to, to market your business from a local level standpoint. And Though we do postings for the franchisee on their Facebook pages, we encourage them to engage their Facebook page and, and, and doing so by, and this is a part of the secret sauce, but it's also not top secret is liking other local businesses, right? With your page and, and, and commenting on if it's a restaurant or if it's an auto service business or, or whatever the service may be, or the company may be and liking on, on their their post and, and making comments about it. And then all of a sudden they start doing that to you. And then you start getting a lot of different eyes on your business that you wouldn't have otherwise. And some of our franchisees have been just tremendous at that. And, and then again, it's, again, it's a, it's something that's free. It's grassroots marketing at its best where you're really using a platform that doesn't really cost you really anything but time. It's a great business. And you guys do like annual quarterly events, like where all of the franchises get together in one spot. Do you do that like once a year or something? We do. We have a, an annual convention. It's typically in February and yeah, it's just a great opportunity for the franchisees to, to all come together and to network with one another. And we also invite our vendors. And so we have a vendor showcase. And again, it's an opportunity for our franchisees to, to share best practices in, in a breakout format. We do have group presentations. It's also a, a great opportunity being in February to catapult into the pool season. And we'll have a, a keynote speaker, motivational speaker that comes in and challenges, places the challenge to, to our owners. And, and we'll also roll out new initiatives. If we've partnered with a new vendor, we will typically utilize that time to, to do that because we have most everybody together all in one place. And so we do use that time from a training perspective as well. So let's talk about the construction side of ASP. I know this is something that you all just rolled out at the beginning of the year. Congratulations. That's huge. Jumping from pool service to renovation and new pool construction that's, that's wild. So congrats. And can you give us uh, some details on what that looks like for the business? Yeah, absolutely. As I mentioned earlier, we make money historically three ways, cleaning pools, doing repair work and pool renovations. <clears throat> and about 12 months ago, um, 
we felt like that it was time for us to create a full construction path for our franchisees. Not that we didn't provide support for those that wanted to build before. We just didn't really <clears throat> invest and, and put the resources and time and processes and, and structure in place that really we needed to do. And, and, and so we did that about 12 months ago. We, we brought in some outside help as well in the industry. We, we added to our, our team, two of our franchisees, two of our top franchisees that have been building swimming pools for years and what we would consider experts in it. So we brought them onto our team to help us build this initiative out <clears throat> and provide the, the content, but also the support, hands-on support with our franchisees that were interested in adding new construction as a revenue stream in their business. And that took about six months to put together. And as we got into January, we decided to roll it out to the company. In the past, we had had maybe 20 of our locations annually build a pool. And that would range from some locations would just do one or two up to 10 to 15. And so in different pools, gunite pool, vinyl liner, and fiberglass. And as we moved into the, created our pool construction uh, program, we identified that fiberglass pools would be the best path for us in regards to bringing in someone new to pool construction and them being able to go and sell a pool and install a pool. Several reasons for that. One's from a cost perspective, but also two from a simplicity <clears throat> of installation. And weather plays a big part. But if you're installing a vinyl liner pool or a gunite pool, it could take weeks, months. A fiberglass pool typically can be done in a couple of weeks. And so we partnered with Latham and they gave us our own line of fiberglass pools. And, and so that's how we rolled out the pool construction program in January. February, Latham offered us a training in, in Zephyr Hills, Florida at their training facility. And so we had 50 franchisees attend that. So we had approximately 20 of our builders that, that had already built pools and, and had added that revenue stream to their company. <clears throat> but then we had 30 new locations want to learn more about wow. installing fiberglass pools. Yeah. Wow. That's exactly right. When I saw that attendance sheet leading up to that training in February, I was thinking to myself, it's impressive. We, we are off and running on this thing. And, and so far uh, of those 30 new franchises that, that are trained and are actively marketing new construction, giving out estimates, et cetera, we have close to 60 estimates out and I could be under reporting that, but I believe it's 60 estimates. We've also sold 13 pools. Those are fiberglass, two are gunite. And again, th those pools are from locations that have never built a swimming pool before. And so our goal there is to do 25. We're hopeful that those 30 locations can build a total of, of 25 pools this year. And, um, and we're halfway there. And, and, and I, I think so far, so good from an initiative standpoint, right? Our ultimate goal in the next five years is to go from 30% of our locations offering new pool construction to 75%. Wow. And our franchisees get that phone call. And for years and years, they've just referred it. They've referred it to another a company in, in, in town that, that, that builds pools. And so we saw that as a missed opportunity. However, I don't want it to be something where our locations go into the mold of building one pool a week. I want it to be steady and slow. I, I, I want it to be a great customer experience. I want our franchisees to be able to babysit that pool from start to finish. And ultimately I want our franchisees to make money on those pools, have a good experience doing it to where they'll want to build another pool, right? Cause you're putting a hole in someone's backyard. It's, it's totally different than, than cleaning a pool, replacing a pump, or even replastering, retiling someone's pool. Really nothing compared to, to building a pool from scratch. I think slow and steady is the way one, two, three pools a year per location. I think that's our goal. And really the scale would be more of our locations building. That's what we want to do. We want to be able to be the one shop stop when someone calls needing some type of pool service 
or needing a new pool. And how are they being trained on this? I know heard you say something about Latham has engineers that will visit one or two after the first ones are done. Absolutely. Latham's been a great partner. They have offered that and they have, they have followed through with it. And any of our franchisees that are new to construction, when they sell their first two pools, Latham will come out and, and help them on install day, the day they drop the shell. And after all, dig's done? After the dig's done. And, and, and we also have our business coaches are also in a position too, where they, they will go out possibly on the day of the dig or the shell dropping. But typically with Latham being there, we don't feel like that's important. We've had some that have gone out afterwards to help with equipment install. Ultimately, what we're wanting to do, Greg, is to provide the support so that those franchisees have confidence. Okay, I'm building a pool. I've never done that before. All pool builders had their first build, right? Sometimes it's easy to forget that. It's you no, know, they, they were born and they knew how to build a pool. You know, that's not how it works. There's got to be a first for everything, right? And it's no difference here. And it's not that it's not an easy thing to do. And so we want to make sure that we're providing that support, giving them that confidence. Um, and again, ultimately to where it's a successful project and everybody's happy at the end, there's a Google review that's given, there's referrals and the franchisee has, has made money doing it and ready for the next one. Yeah. And they got somebody to clean the pool afterwards, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's good for business for every pool that's built. It's good for our industry. It's another pool. It's another set of equipment. And um, yes, we're all about adding more pools to the ground. Yeah. But I think it's equally good to be familiar uh, from construction to service if that's ever possible, just because of the lay of the land, if you dug the trenches and the hole for the pool and you saw where all the lines were laid for plumbing and electrical uh, when things might go wrong, because they do, pools don't last forever. Nobody would know better than you because you've got photos and different things like that. No doubt. The schematics uh, of the plumbing is so important, right? Especially when the leak comes and it's it's a pool. At some point, it's going to leak. Yeah. And it's like concrete. At some point, it's going to crack. And there's no, that you're exactly right. And there's a lot of value in that. And, and so, again, it's why a year ago we decided to move forward with a more robust training support, partnering with Latham, which was incredibly important, beefing up our team with successful franchisees that have been building for a long time. We are going to continue to invest in it because we feel like it's going to allow us to hit our goals as a company in the years to come. Are, do you have a build only for ASP? Is that something that you might do in the future? Maybe somebody wants to step in that has build experience and they just want to be on the build side and not so much the, the service. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't think that would be an issue at all. I think what's interesting is in most cases, our franchisees would say, the value of having weekly accounts and repair is again, recession proof, and it's going to continue to pay the bills. And normally that's the way our franchisees look at pool cleaning revenue and repair revenue, renovation, and now new construction are normally just icing on the cake. And it's that next level that a franchisee can not only grow, take their top line revenue and move it drastically, but also they can do the same to the bottom line because our model is to sub out that renovation and pool construction versus having in-house. And, and again, that goes back to, we're not necessarily concerned about building one pool a week. If you have an in-house team, you need to have volume and to have volume, right. you've got to be you know really restrictive on what you're charging for those kind of things. And it can compromise your profitability. And so we're not focused on volume on, on that side of things. But anyway, to answer your question, yeah, absolutely. We, we would love to partner and, and we feel like we would add value to uh, an existing pool builder that would want to partner uh, with us and, and, and scale their business. And they may find, again, 
adding pool cleaning and repair is just that next step for them to make more money. Maybe. I love it. You said Latham created a, a line for you all. What exactly does that look like? Is there like a custom shape or what does that entail? Yeah, no, it's a, a great question. More so for the sake of they have territory license with certain builders. And for us specifically, they created a line so that we wouldn't run into to those issues in some markets where there's already someone installing a Latham fiberglass shell. It's just a different line. The shell could be different. It could be different designs, different layouts, but nothing drastic. So it's a way for them to protect their current builders, but also provide ASP with an opportunity to enter the market and install Latham fiberglass pools. Yeah, that's awesome. You got the logistics figured out because I know with the pre-made pools, that can be very difficult in getting that dialed in. Absolutely. They're heavy and it's, there's freight involved and it's expensive. And then there's also the crane to lift the shell and, and place it in the hole. But again, <clears throat> those are things that we've trained our franchisees on. We continue to train. Latham's providing uh, continued education, not only from a technical standpoint, but also from a sales training perspective. And one thing we're really excited about is, again, partnering with Latham. We're going to install another pool on our campus in December. We're going to offer a, another fiberglass pool installation training. It'll be three or four days. It'll consist of the whole process from, from the dig to the backfill, equipment installed, and so we're really excited about that. That'll be the eighth pool on, on our campus that we use for trainings, pool school trainings. That's awesome. Love that. So is there anything up before we close this? Do you have anything new going on? I know there's a million things going on, but. Yeah, there is a lot going on. I would say that in, in, in closing, just with the economy like it is, we've partnered with a consumer financing company called BuyFin. And that's opened up some opportunities for our franchisees to sell pool equipment, pumps, filters, heaters to customers that may just be cash strapped, but want to keep their pool going. And so it's a, it's a way for the franchisee to get the sale and to get paid and the homeowner to, to, to pay that, that cost back over a period of time. And we've seen it work with equipment. We've seen it work with pool renovations. And we've also seen it with a couple of our pools, our new pool installs. So we're real excited about BuyFin. Our franchisees love it. It's really easy to use. The customer seems to love it. It seems to, to provide a quick response back and the money moves pretty quickly. So we're excited about that. And in closing, just looking at ASP as a whole, we, we're excited about the future. As a company, we're incredibly healthy. Our goal this year is to hit 115 million system-wide sales and to finish at 148 locations. That would be adding 16 locations in 2024. Our goal in five years is to grow to 180 million in system-wide sales. And to go over that, really that next benchmark for us, threshold for us is 200 locations. So we hope to be at 210 locations, five years. And we feel like that with, again, our model and, and some of the things that we've talked about today, marketing strategies, pool construction initiative, partnering with business-minded individuals, uh, we feel like we'll achieve those goals. So the future's bright for ASP. We feel like the, the best is yet to come for sure. That's incredible. I read you guys are taking care of over 420 million gallons of water. I was like, oh my God, when you put it like that is just totally insane. Yes, I think our it, it grows daily. I think we're like around 26,000 bodies of water weekly that are wow. maintained and it's uh it's been a great ride being a part of asp from the beginning i've loved every minute of it and again I, I love this great industry that we're in if someone's looking to make a change jump into the pool industry i don't think you'll regret it i agree so for people that want to find out more information about asp where should they go yeah absolutely they can go to our website you can go to uh, ASPPoolCo.com. That's ASPPoolCo.com. You can also go to ASP 
franchising.com. And both sites will uh, provide you with the information that you're looking for. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Appreciate your time. I know you're a busy man, but this was a really fun discussion, learning more about ASP. And yeah, thank you. Had a good time. I did too, Greg. And again, thanks for the invitation, man. I'm a big believer in what you're doing. I uh, love your podcast. I can't wait to the next time. Thanks again. Yeah, you're welcome.